and just to dramatize what that means. That's a year before my literary secretary, Lily, was born. <laughs> so the first three or four books were books about anticipating a time about the end of oil, a time in which the petrochemical treadmill would begin to wear a little thin, about a time when things might change. Now, when National Geographic is one of the voice boxes of the dominant culture, does two cover stories in a short period of time, one on the end of oil and one on what's going to happen after oil, I think that's a very significant development. The era of easy oil, the CEO of Chevron says, is over. So the first 18 pages of World Inc. are the story of how Dr. Edgar Habib, the chief economist of Chevron, comes to our leadership networks, the Corporate Affiliates Program, and briefs us all on this changing world. And he says that for the first time as an economist, he has to understand that the energy debate is fundamentally different. First of all, we're past the age of oil, he argued. We're now in the age of natural gas. Right? And it's possible that we may be in the age of natural gas because of the sustainability movement and that a feature of the segment of the age of natural gas is renewables. So that, that has suddenly happened. Now, the second thing that I, Habib said, and I, I want you to just think about it in a big way because this is a big picture kind of institute here. The second thing Habib said is that the world is no longer a competition just as we thought it was last century between energy providers like the Middle East and energy consumers like America. He said there's a th whole new third entity in the sector of global competition, which is called energy conservers, right? And that's why you can get a Siemens, which is now a $100 billion company, focusing on control technologies and efficiency. Why you can get a Johnson & Johnson. Why you can get a GE saying that 20 billion worth of its 600 billion, or roughly one third of its entire value, is that right? 20 into 60, 1 30th of its entire value, that's significant, 20 billion, all right, is connected to eco imagination and efficiency, all right? So something is happening that's radically different. So my next four or five slides is trying to show you how this is cascading even into building and housing, okay? So I talked to you a little bit about computing, a little bit about uh, auto, automaking. I mean, the Toyota example is fundamental because in automaking, they've been doing the same thing for 100 years. It's like making cement, all right? They know how to do it. And so to have this change is a pretty radical change. So let's look about what's pushing the home of the future to be a little different. The next four slides, if you can go to the next one. Um, and I want to get a show of hands. How many people in the room are working on making housing more efficient? Great, sir. Bill Russell, woman in the back. This is critical because I think that if you look at the climate change issue, I think you'll find out that, in fact, a larger portion of climate change matters are connected to the efficiency of office space and housing than they are to transportation. And so what we see here in Leeds is we see a growing emphasis on requiring greater efficiency. We have 16 states already that are requiring new and existing buildings have LEED certification. Let me try and help you all visualize this pretty rapidly. One of the clients, yes sir? What is LEED certification? Yeah, it's a set of weighing factors that allows a home builder to get tax credits and also to get efficiency and reduce the spin of its utility tile. And so it deals with 114 or more different factors about efficiency of a roof, windows, construction materials, and so forth. And it's a certification effort. It's a third party certification effort. So the states are coming in in the absence of federal leadership, sir, and requiring this to happen. Yep. Now, what's significant is it's happening, the, the key thing to take from this is it's happening in all of the areas of the largest real estate growth. So let me show you an example of how concrete and rapidly it's happening. One of our clients, Louisiana Pacific, is now called LP, 
And for those of you who want to get a sense of how swift things change, just eight, nine years ago, Louisiana Pacific was an object of wrath of the environmental community. Earth First would cut down trees and put the old growth stump right on the headquarters desk, all right? Now, LP felt that pressure and changed from the Northwest and is now based in Nashville and has a new family of products that are building products based on green growth. They're moving rapidly in that direction. One example, Tech Shield, is a radiant barrier that if it was installed in this mansion would allow the air conditioning load to be reduced by a third, right? So it's a laminated foil with perforation attached to oriented strand board. Now what's amazing about the, these products, so LEED is a set of codes and rules encouraging that, is that this is going to liberate the type of housing that doesn't change comfort, doesn't change size, but changes efficiency. So LEEDS is one of those variables. Any other questions about LEEDS before we move on? Let's see how it's all coordinating on top of what the future house will look like. If we can go to the next one. Energy Star. There, there are now a half a million homes that are Energy Star certified. So it's not just your refrigerator or your toaster that's being selected as being more efficient. It's the entire home. So what does this lead to in terms of the World Inc. framework that I'm describing to you? I predict, and I hope that you all can see this in the next two, three years, that GE, looking at this kind of pattern, looking at the fact that it's already anticipating $20 billion worth of revenue in efficiency, will soon provide your children, when they're ready to buy their first home, a dashboard, an electronic dashboard that they'll team with some big building contractor like Masco, in which, just like we did at Toyota, when you drive the Prius, aerodynamically it feels different than the average car, and in terms of information, swift information, you're actually being signaled at how much fuel you're saving. It's a dashboard, right? Because of Energy Star, because of other developments, it's my prediction that the Honeywells, the Energy Savers, the GEs, the Johnson and Johnson, I mean the Johnson Controls, will very, very rapidly offer these dashboards so that the homes of the near future, probably by next Earth Day or soon after, you'll be able to say, I want some greenhouse gas emission credit in my home because I'm proving that I'm using less in my shower, less in my kitchen, and so forth and so on. Third slide to, to try and demonstrate this. And this is the slide that kind of connects to Mel Jones. I already talked to you before about how these giant corporations within themselves control a huge percentage of the pie. It's significant that there's been so much debate within America over the last eight years about the absence of federal leadership on climate change. And yet if you look at this, 42% of the states are evolving renewable energy portfolios. Now, when I started writing my books in the 80s, we would often look to three or four progressive states before you could make federal change. You know, here you have 42% of the states already beginning to require pieces of renewable. So my firm over the last few years has been doing uh, benchmarking where the giant renewable companies, which are not really that big yet, are learning how to sell renewables, not just to hospitals and schools, but to giant industrial customers, like the Targets and the Lowe's and the ConocoPhillips and the Dow's and the DuPonts. That is a big development that this slide shows. And the next one, very rapidly. Uh, very often there are people slaving away in the scientific community in the state regulatory agencies and regional places about how will climate change be the swiftest piece of information in different regions. And this chart shows that most management leaders, corporate leaders, most social leaders of the future are going to need to look at ways to deal